In my head, if Volkswagen built a pickup Beetle, I think that's what it would have looked like. My name's Joe Riley. I am the owner of Joe's Fab Lab. I built the, the BMW Volkswagen Beetle pickup. The BMW estate was actually my own car, what I drove to work every day. Um, and the, the Volkswagen Beetle won my wife's car. And uh, basically I, messing around in the rain, I curbed the BMW and smashed the wheel and the, bent the front suspension leg. So that was off the road. So I borrowed my wife's Beetle uh, to use that for work. And then I cooked that, um, basically the thermostat, and it, I blew the engine up. So I had two cars wrecked, sat side by side. I'd done a, a drawing years, probably five years previous, building a Beetle pickup, but I always thought they were too short in the wheelbase. So I just started doing a few measurements and then I started measuring a bit more and I thought, you know something, we can build this Beetle on the BMW. Uh, I'd done a BMW swap before on an L200, so I knew it could be done. Um, so yeah, we started uh, stripping the Beetle and uh, stripping the, the BMW. And then uh, 18 weeks later, we uh, we had a Beetle pickup. We shot the Beetle straight in half because we didn't need the rear end of the Beetle whatsoever. We was only left really with the door apertures. I didn't keep the roof. I kept the scuttle, but we cut it out. So all we had were two door apertures and put them to one side, scrapped the rest of the Beetle and uh, kept the, the wing rails. Uh, then we started chopping the BMW, taking all its parts off, i.e. cutting the roof off, um, cutting the outer A posts off and we cut the inners off the Beetle and then we started marrying them together. So the car is actually about 15 mil wider than a Beetle on its A-post because obviously you're limited to what you can do. The dashboard sits about three inches further back than a normal Beetle. Um, but yeah, as long as the door's open, you can get in and out of it, you can build what you want really. Um, so yeah, the whole of the BM the whole of the floor of the IE Beetle is actually a BMW, even down to the suspension, brakes, everything. So you've still got aircon and you still fill it up with the original BMW fuel tank. So it drives just like a BMW. The only thing I wish I'd not done is took the cruise control steering off, steering wheel, because I put a Golf R steering wheel on, uh, made that fit, because it looked cool. But then when you're on long journeys, like we've got to Cornwall in it, and we've got Scotland in it, it'd be nice to be on the motorway and just put cruise on. F-150 backlights uh, off a of Ford F-150. Um, I use the F-150 backlight because every other light I put in, I could always tell what it came off. So I tried a caddy light, I knew it were off a caddy. I tried something else, I knew that were off. And I thought, you don't see very many F-150s. And I thought it'd go with the flow, how it... So I got some F-50 backlights and then uh, fabricated, so it's not fiberglass, they're unfabricated rear quarters. Um, had the back windows cut, made a template, and had it all cut and tempered. I put a Peugeot 206 panoramic roof in it. Uh, so I took the whole roof off a of Peugeot and grafted that because it was slightly wider anyway. Um, I could use what I wanted as long as it fit. So yeah, I used a Peugeot 206 roof. 2014 Porsche came in front bumper lower and grafted them together onto the Beetle to make it look slightly different. US spec headlamps. Ricaro seats, black carpet as it had grey carpet initially. The only thing is the CAN bus doesn't work. So when I lock the doors, the car, sh the, the Volkswagen side of the car shuts itself down after 20 minutes. So I kept on locking myself out of the car uh, and couldn't get back in. So obviously we just quickly devised a way where we can, rather than take the battery back, take the battery off to put the battery back on, because it isolated the windows, it isolated everything. Um, we just got a little switch so that the windows work. After 20 minutes, it'll shut the sensor down, but I can quickly flick it and everything works again. Um, but yeah, it's been a joy. I've, uh, 
at first I had 17 inch BBS fake splits on it with Toyo Proxy tyres. And I thought I wanted to go down that route um, with a big chunky tyre and then and it were on coilovers. And then I just happened to drop on some air suspension. It didn't look right when it were lowered on these smaller wheels. So then I had the T5 and I know the stud pattern's the same. And I just thought, let me just try these 19 inch wheels on. And I put the wheels on it were like, it totally changed the car. So I could proper air it out. Um, but the thing is, after experience of running air, I mean, I've had a, an airbag go on the front that popped. And then I've had two airlines blow. Um, so I've got air on the back still because I carry weight in it. I mean, I, I buy steel, I go and pick stuff up in it. It's, I drive it every day. It's an everyday abuser. Um, but I put coilovers on the front because every time I lowered it down, if the road was slightly uneven, it'd belly my bumper out and maybe crack my bumper. So rather than mess about and having to find that I'm on even ground, I just took it off and put coilovers on. But like I say, I do drive it every day. I, we got, we've been to Cornwall three times in it. Uh, I've been up to Scotland in it. We've, we've been everywhere in it. Uh, at first, I used to get pulled in it quite a lot because the police would pull me up and tell me that I've got the wrong registration. And obviously, I'd get out of the car and look, and I'm like, no, that's my registration. But I used to have copies of the photographs in the glove box. So as soon as I showed them the photographs of the, the, the build, i.e., because it still is a BMW, um, I mean, it's tax tested, insured. I mean, they were quite happy. And they'd say, oh, change the colour on the logbook because my BMW was silver. Uh, and it's, it's still to this day, I haven't changed it because I mean, I'll end up paying it again anyway. So one day I might transfer back to silver. So what's the point in changing it? <laughs> when we chopped the BMW, we took the dash out so we didn't get like welding splatter on it and grinding marks in it. So, but the, dash, the dashboard would literally just go back in because it's still on a BMW bulkhead. So the, 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 the dash itself would just literally go back in. Um, obviously, the dash is slightly wider, so when I went to put the Beetle door cards on, they wouldn't fit, the doors wouldn't shut. So obviously, I utilised part of the door card and cut round the dash. So when you close the doors, the, the door card actually encroaches into the dash, which it, won't, it doesn't hurt it, it's not hurting nothing. Um, obviously, I trimmed it all myself because I, I ain't got a lot of money um, and it's my everyday abuser. It'd be nice to give it to somebody and say, look, this is what I'd like. Could you take it to the next level sort of thing? Because I let people write on it now, it's, it's hold. So, I mean, for the last three or four months, I've been letting people sharpie all over it. Um, just to see what they say, I mean, see if they like it, if they don't like it. I'll drive down the road and a amount of people at Brett the Next to look at it. Or I could be on M1 or the A1 or the M18 and someone will go zooming past um, and then they'll slow down and they'll have the partner or the mate at the side and they'll, they'll video it driving. But the thing is, I've never seen a video of it driving because I'm always driving it. So it would be nice to say, look, take my car, let me follow you in your car and let me see what it looks like. Because I only ever see it in shop windows. And it, you know, I know it's my car and I'm a bias, but I think it looks cool. And it's good to be different, I believe. So we got invited to a, a car meet in Blackpool and it were a Ford meet in Mobile. So it turns up and I weren't going to park it in there where all the, the, the Fords were. Well, so I parked it in a pay display car parked over the road and me and my wife walked over to look at these Fords and the, the guy come over he's like why have you not pulled why have you pulled over there I says I don't want my car tipping on its side because these are all Fords and I'm in a BMW stroke Volkswagen he's like no no fetch over we've got some Ferraris coming and stuff like that I says, so fetch over so I ran back over the road and fetched it over and parked it next to an RS2000 and then literally just as I'm getting out of the car a guy in a Lamborghini pulls it side of me and obviously I don't mind talking to people but I mean because the car's been done for so long now I mean people can race check it I mean you do a race check on it it comes back as a BMW and then if they're wanting to know more I'll tell them but I've gone to look at some other cars so I'm not just all about my car I went to go and look at some Fords and when I come back there must have been um, a dozen people around my car and the guy at the side of me in this Lamborghini and he was so mortified that I've got this old 
Beetle pickup that everyone's looking at, and he's got a brand new Lamborghini. And I mean, um, and I, I spoke to the guy. I mean, um, he was nice, and I said, you don't have to have the most expensive car sometimes to have people look around it. But people wait for me to come back because I want to chat about, oh, have you done this? Is this fiberglass? And then. And it's like, no, it's all steel. We don't work with fiberglass. We've made it from scratch. Or I'll get a person say, oh, does this come from Brazil? Did they make these in Brazil? And I'm like, Reg, check it. No, it's, I mean, it would be nice. And it's just the concept I had. I like, if Volkswagen made a Beetle, it'd be nice to have done it to a new Beetle, but I didn't have the money. But if I, in my head, if Volkswagen built a pickup Beetle, I think that's what it would have looked like. When we got the front end on, when we put the door apertures on and I put the roof in off the Peugeot, obviously we put all the front end on. And then I did actually drive it around the estate with nothing on the back. So it just had two door apertures and the front end of the car. And it was strong. I mean, I were doing donuts in it and all sorts. And it, it, the rendering was always like having the, the box arch like I've done. Um, but as I were posting it on, uh, on Facebook, everyone was like, you should put the beetle back wing, wing, wings on. And I didn't think it should have. I didn't like it. Um, I wanted it to be like on its own. Even though it doesn't, I mean, yeah, it's got round wings at the front. So people say it should have had them on the back. But obviously now when I finished it, so the back quarters, basically I did one back quarter and I'm like, I don't like that. So I'd spend two days looking at it, you know, on and off. I'd leave it outside and I'd go out, look at it. Do I like it? leave it alone, come back in, do some work, go back outside, look at it at a different angle. I'm like, no, I don't like that. So then I'd make it out of cardboard and then chop the, the one I'd made out of steel, what I'd only tack together to see if I like it. I'd make something else out of cardboard first and then just gaffer tape it on. And then, oh, I kind of like that. So yeah, I used like the English wheel, uh, planishing hammer, shrinker stretcher, stuff like that. It's got an M3 of an E92 M3 exhaust. But yeah, I had that modified to fit because I'm not an exhaust man. So I paid somebody to do that. I was having it painted gold. And they said to paint it gold from red, we'd have to paint it silver or white. So I says, well, I've got literally probably three or four days before this show. I've got to put it back together. So let's do it white because if we ain't got time, we can leave it white and I can always fetch it back to have it put gold. I just drive it. And the thing is, it's funny because I don't mind chucking, I mean, when, when we were redoing the house, I had loads of plastic to pick up uh, and browning and cement and this and that. And I turn up to Travis Perkins and just chuck it in the back and people are like, why would you do such a thing? I'm like, well, that's its purpose. That's what it's for. I mean, it's not a show car. I mean, people think it's a show car. It's not, because if it was a show car, I wouldn't drive it every day. And it'd be in a garage, not sat outside, because it lives outside. And I like people looking at it, to be perfectly honest. I mean, you can, I can go to a chip shop or I can go into a local shop or, not maybe local anymore, because it's that old from my neck of woods where I live. Everyone's seen it. But for instance, if I drove over to Sheffield, I might be picking some up or to Rotherham or, and I've just nipped in to get myself a Red Bull or some crisps or something to eat. I'll come out and there'll be a, I mean, an array of people wanting to talk to me and it's like, kind of cool. Don't get me wrong, when you're really busy, you know, and you ain't got time to talk, I mean, and you feel a bit ignorant, you still give them that little bit of time. And uh, I mean, everybody I've let drive it, they all say, it, you know, it's a, it is a BMW. Yeah, I lent it out um, with Pal in front of a few of his pals. Just, just asked me, never asked me before, asked if he could borrow it. And I, I think he just said it because you were in front of his pals. And I'm like, yeah, take it. As long as I can take your car. I mean, I, you can't leave me carless. Um, yeah, you can have it, take it for a week or so. So he's like, oh, I want to put my girlfriend up in here. And blah, blah, blah. I says, yeah, I mean, take it. He says, I'll, I'll, can I have it for three days? He says, yeah, anyway, a week had gone past and uh, still not been in touch. And I'm driving a, a Mondeo. And I'm driving his Mondeo. And I'm like, I need my car back. So I rings him up and he's like, I've got a confession. I'm like, what? And I had a dash cam in the car at the time. 
Um, this is I've smashed the front end of the car up. I'm like, how? He's like, pulling on my drive, I've hit the bay window in my house. So he didn't dare phone me to tell me no. So he'd literally done that the same afternoon of him borrowing the car. So I says, it can't be that bad. I says, don't worry about it, we'll sort it. And then uh, when I finally took him his car back, because he won't fetch me my car, I took it back and the front one was hanging off. I was like mortified. I said, so you're not drove anywhere? He says, I literally drove home to get changed to go and pick Mrs. up. He says, and I hit the front of the bay window in my house. He says, that's what's happened. And I'd literally just done the Cayman front bumper. Now, obviously, I, I do get random people. Like I've just been to Telford's show, uh, Ultimate Stance, and a few people have come up and like, oh, yeah, you can buy these kits off a of Smith kit, and you buy them from America, and, I mean, they're X amount of money. And, I, I mean, I let them say what... And I'm like, it's not fibreglass. And then, I mean, sometimes I've got a magnet in the car, and then I say, chuck a magnet on it. It's not fibreglass, it's not a kit. I mean, if you look at it and you take a bit of time to look at the car, I see it's, it's longer in the wheelbase. I'm not slagging the Smith kits off because I kind of like them, but a Beetle's too short to be made into a pick pickup if the wheelbase stayed the same. But that's just my, my opinion. I mean, there's plenty of them out there, what people are doing, um, but it's not something I'd want to do. I mean, so, I mean, I got the best of both worlds. I wanted a rear-wheel drive Beetle to start, um, and rather go around the route of shoe owning a BMW actually into a Beetle, what's going to be too short anyway to be made into a pickup. After doing loads of measuring, I mean, I've got, I've still got a rear wheel drive, it's still a BMW, but looks like a Beetle, so it's like the opposite way around. I'm not sure what the horsepower is on a 330i. I think it's 272, I'm sure it's something like that, but. I've had the ECU remapped and the, so it revs around to about 7,000 RPM now, because it's auto. At Bruntingthorpe racetrack, I mean, I got it to like 130, but then, I mean, you've run out of road. And I could have took it long, I mean, I, but why? I don't, quicker to 70 is more me and burning my back tyres out, I mean, going sideways around a roundabout, sideways around corners. That's what I enjoy, I don't have to go fast. But yeah, I just love driving the car. Um, I mean, people on my street where I live, you know, I've got an old ice cream van. Uh, they must think I'm crackers. I mean, because of the amount of cars I've had over the years, what I've built. Um, but this is probably the longest one I've ever drove, because I normally get bored and want to build something else. But it's nice to be able to build stuff for other people and be able to afford to keep my own and still be able to build something else for myself rather than having to sell that one to sponsor a new one. Um, that is a nice thing. And bu building stuff for people is kind of cool, uh, especially when they give you the free reign to do what you want, within reason, obviously. If there's anybody out there who's got any crazy bills, what they've got in their head, uh, and don't think it's possible or they don't think they can do it, or they don't know if anybody can do it, um, gives a shout out because uh, anything's possible, really. I mean, there's a few crazy builds we've done over the years. Uh, and then we'll do restoration. So the Rolls Royce behind us is a really rare car. It's a drop head coupe, Chinese eyed drop head coupe. Uh, I mean, you cannot buy any panels for it. Uh, so we've had it in a few years building it. Um, but we're on the latter, latter stages of it now. So we do do restorations as well. Like I say, if somebody's got some of what they don't think can be done, or engine conversions. I mean, we've done quite a few. Just get in touch, Joe's Fab Lab on Facebook and uh, Joe's Fab Lab uh, Instagram.